Okay, welcome back to Splendid Knitting, where today it's Splendid Painting, actually, because I am painting a new shelf for my yarn. This shelf is um, made by a great-grandfather or something in my family, and I got it from my grandma's house, my grandparents' house, and it's very cute and kind of rustic so right now I'm just sanding it and I have been to the paint store sorry the lighting's bad and I got the paint just a little one and so far so good Okay, time to let it dry. It looks a little uneven right now, but hopefully when it's dry it'll look good. I'm not really sure how painting works. I also didn't get in there because that is too much work and it's going to be covered anyway. <laughs> but I think the rest of it looks good. I like the color I chose. So. Alright, on my quest to make beautiful my beautiful little knitting corner. I am painting the little stool that I'm putting next to my chair, the same color. So let's go. Okay, <laughs> so I have been sitting and knitting for a while. I've actually worked on three separate projects while I've been sitting here. Um, here, let me show you. We got my newly painted stool, which looks really cute. And we have my knitting shelf over here. I'm really loving it. Oops. <laughs> and I have been working on the Salty Day sweater. Um, and I have been thinking because I'm almost on the body. I'm wondering if this sweater would, if I would get more use out of it cropped and just like start the ribbing here. Um, because I feel like such a textured knit, I feel like I might not reach for it if it's like too long of a sweater too. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, Rachel, don't you always skimp out and make things too short because you get bored and you want to move on to the next thing? Yes, but this time it feels intentional. Like I feel like I would wear it more if it was just cropped. You know? So I might just start the ribbing here. How many rows do I have? So it's like three quarters of the way to where like I would start the ribbing anyway so it's not even that much smaller but I think I will I think I might play around and and make it cropped um the other things that I'm working on we have a change of plans so originally I was knitting this Sophie scarf for my sister and I have been listen I just told her about it because 
when it comes to knitting, when you're spending hours and hours making something for somebody else especially, uh, I just don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to make her something that she's not going to use or wear. So I think this is too small a scarf for her. I, and I think I'm just going to make this one for my mom because the color palette works for her too. And then for my sister, she actually found this yarn. It's like a Caron cake one. Uh, and she brought it to me and was like, hey, this is a cool yarn. So I'm making her a chunkier scarf out of that because she likes bigger scarves more. And then the other thing I was working on is just the cardigan I'm making with the yarn I showed in my last video. I forget what it's called. I haven't done very much of it. Part of me is still like questioning whether that's what I want to do with the yarn. So that's probably going to be slow for a bit unless I find a pattern that I'm like, I have to make this and that's just going to be the yarn for it. So yeah, I'm going to knit the ribbing for this. I just got paid. So now I want to buy knitting patterns and yarn. I have a lot of thoughts right now about what I want to do. So. I just saw this morning uh, Kuto Vakika posted a new cardigan pattern and I feel like she did it in this beautiful green color and I was like, can I, can I have it? I want it. So I was thinking this is like exactly what I was waiting for because with this yarn I started my own cardigan and I haven't been super like excited about it, so I don't know if I should keep going. I was thinking if I bought some mohair to put with it and knit her pattern, then it might end up something I really love. So um, I'll probably be unraveling this and then buying some minty green mohair to pair with this and making that sweater, that cardigan if it's the right size yarn and like I think it's a good feel for it I hope it'll work well paired with mohair but that's my idea so far since I'll have to wait a little on that then um I think she set the patterns out this weekend so I guess it's like in a few days I think I'll just keep working on my salty day sweater and then yeah unravel that and figure it out um i forget what i showed before i have a little more progress on this scarf for my sister it's in brioche stitch which i haven't done very much but it's really fun i'm liking it um i am now on the twisted rib at the bottom of the salty day sweater i <clears throat> i'm gonna speak really candidly right now I hate it. Not the sweater. I hate the twisted rib. It makes me want to die because I feel like it just doesn't, it's way tighter than regular ribbing and it makes me mad. And I only just went down one needle size. She said to go down to three millimeters from five, but I just went down to four because I think it would have been torture to knit the rib in three millimeters. And I'm like not used to doing twisted ribs, so it's just, oh my god. And like this yarn splits a lot, so it's just kind of killing me. And I know I'm going to have to do the collar in twisted rib and the cuffs. And I'm just thinking about that and I just, god, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do that. But I will, for the sake of how it looks. Like it's just... It feels like it's not going smoothly and maybe I'm doing something wrong but I just feel like frustrated when I'm knitting this and I hate feeling frustrated when I'm knitting because that is not the point but I'll do it for this sweater that's why usually when I have patterns that say to do twisted rib I just do like regular rib 
because I think it looks just as smooth and it frustrates me less. So I'm going to keep going on this one. I will probably buy that Kuto Vakiha pattern this weekend when it comes out. And what else was I going to say? I'm probably going to order a little bit of a yarn because I can't be stopped. They can't stop me. I, I make enough money to save for university and I spend the rest on yarn. Probably too much on yarn, honestly. I might end up just spending it all on yarn. I don't need to go to university. Drops Daisy. That's kind of what I want to get. And I don't know if that's a good idea. But I'm probably going to be ordering mohair anyway for this, so... Like, what's the harm? You know what I'm saying? Okay, bye-bye. You guys are about to be so proud of me because I am doing Italian bind-off on my Salty Day sweater. And it's working. And it looks beautiful. The only thing thing I have a problem with is that I've been working on it for two and a half hours like just casting off two and a half hours and I am halfway so is this the price we pay or am I just slow and it'll get faster or is it just terrible all the time like it's kind of fun it's just taking forever and also this yarn is so like felty that it's like a struggle to keep the yarn from just turning into a, like a ball of felt. I'm actually uh, almost on the first sleeve of the Salty Day sweater. Let me show you what's going on. There we go. We got the diamond motif and everything. I think after I'm done this sleeve, I'm going to do the collar just to get that out of the way and then we'll get another sleeve done and then we'll be feeling good. We'll have over a month and a half's worth of knitting under our belt, so that's not too bad for me actually. That's a pretty good amount of time. Okay. Oh my god, I just finished the collar. And I might be overreacting a bit, but uh, that might have been the most excruciating process yet. And I know, like, it's the collar, and that should be fairly easy, and I've done a million of them, and, like, I did a fold-in collar with sweater number 18, and it turned out great. But... This is what I'm working with right now. It is a straight collar. Uh, it was not always. I sewed it, or I knit higher than this, and I had it folded, and I knit it down, and I looked at it, and it was completely off. Like, just, just really terrible. Um, so I tried to take out the casting off like where I knit it folded together and it just wasn't working so I had to cut it <laughs> like oh my god I had to cut the right where I had attached it so that's why it's like messy here I tried to get all the fuzz and yarn out as I could but um I don't know it's fine and then what I did was I sewed into where I wanted the new like collar to end and I unraveled to, till there and then I cast off. So it took probably like three hours but now I have a like just a regular flat collar and I am so good with that. Like I am not, I don't know what it is about the sweater that is like turning me into an idiot um but this is what we're working with i have a sleeve done looks good i have a collar now all i have to do is another sleeve then i'll block it so on ends 
and I will finally be done. Don't get me wrong, I have really enjoyed making this and it's taught me a lot, but I am so ready to do the darling cardigan and just be doing stockinette and not having to do a collar, even though the double knitting might kill me. But, oh God, we're almost there. We're almost there. But my hands are so tired from doing the twisted rib and then sewing it down and then trying to unravel it and then, and then binding off again. Oh my God. But here we are. That was my update. Guess what just came in the mail? My Wolla Warehouse order just arrived. Um, let's not show my address. Whoa! Okay. So, we got some Drops Daisy. Oh, it's pretty. What's it called? Color 14. It's the darkest brown. It looks kind of grayish in the camera, but it is brown. This is smaller than I thought. It's like 100 meters per ball, but it is really pretty and it feels soft. I was hoping to make a vest out of this because I have 400 meters and I think that's enough. There it is. I'm so happy. These are so pretty. Um, And I got... Drops Kid Silk in Pistachio to pair with my um, Loops and Threads Merino so that it's a bit softer and it looks really pretty. That's like really nice. I have never used this mohair before but it feels really soft so I'm very excited. And I have five of these. So that is all that's going on now. It's so soft. I'm making pumpkin cookies and they're almost done. If you're an OG, you might remember that I made these cookies once before in a video with my friend and it was embarrassing. It was cute, like we were little, but anyway, they're making a comeback. I'll show you. They look so yummy. And there's frosting. These always taste like Timbits. They look like the texture of Timbits. And they taste like pumpkin spice. And I'm so, like, I love them. I love them. I'm working on the second sleeve of the Salty Day sweater. And I just realized I have made another mistake. Oh my god, this is crazy. I feel like, because I don't usually make this many mistakes, and I know it's like a harder pattern than I'm usually used to making, but like, this is not normal. I think it, the way she writes her patterns just throws me off a little bit. I think I got used to My Favorite Things Knitwear, and then now I'm making something else, and she writes it slightly differently, and now I'm like, I feel like I'm losing it. The mistake is that I missed um, 10 rows of the knit one purl two. I was supposed to do nine more before the diamond pattern. And I missed that because it was just part of one of the sentences in the pattern. So, and I even highlighted it because I like sensed that I would miss it, but I still did. It's not the end of the world. But this is going to be a fitted Salty Day sweater. And it's like gonna be cute. And it's a different style than what she originally made it as. But it also drives me a little bit crazy when I start making a sweater and it turns out like kind of completely different than what I was envisioning. Oh my god, so I'm losing my mind, but it's okay. Everything is okay. This is going to be the Salty Day Sweater Rachel's version, which is 
different in every way and not on purpose. Okay, and the sweater is done. Um, I think it looks pretty. I also think I want to block it and see, like, if that changes. Like, the sleeves, I know I made the mistake of making them too short, but since I already, like, intentionally did that with the body, I feel like this was just going to be a fitted sweater. I think it looks like the details on it are really pretty, but I do feel like it's a little tight and, like, bunched up right now, so hopefully this yarn blocks well, and then we'll see if it looks more relaxed, because I think the neckline is also a little lumpy, and I want to see if that'll, like, fix itself with blocking. So I will be back to say how that goes. Okay, it's the next day and I have blocked the sweater. Damn, it's fuzzy. Um, so the neckline is looking a lot better. It's kind of standing up instead of being weird and floppy. Um, I think the fabric did stretch out a little bit, not as much as dropped air from the last sweater I did, but this does have more acrylic, so I'm not super like surprised. Um, this is the final product. I think it looks really cute. It is definitely a lot more fitted than Kuto Vakika's like renditions of it, but I think it still turned out really well. And honestly, the more fitted style usually suits me better. Like I'll usually reach for it more. Um, so I think it's cute and I'm pretty happy with it. I did Italian bind off for the first time with everything and I think it looks really clean and nice and it really wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. Um, and I just want to thank the people that have been commenting on stuff because it was someone that said that oh we, like it'll be no problem doing Italian bind off in a comment that like inspired me to do it. So thank you if you are watching and just to everyone. Um, I'm about to go to work, so I'm gonna wrap this up. But I think after all the struggles of making this sweater, it actually turned out really well. And I'm proud of myself for making something kind of challenging that I hadn't done before, so. It's been a good one, guys. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.